In this exercise, we'll practice expressing intervals using inequality notation, using a graph, and also using interval notation. First we have the inequality x is greater than negative three. Notice here negative three is not in this interval. So to show negative three is not in the interval, we would make an open point on negative three using the open dot tool. And then because x is greater than negative three, we would graph to the right using the line segment tool. This is the interval where x is greater than negative three. Another way to express the same interval would be to use a rounded parenthesis on negative three like this, rather than an open point. This indicates the end point of negative three is not in the interval. So this is the second way to graph the exact same interval. And before we talk about interval notation, notice how as we move right on the number line, we would approach positive infinity. So using interval notation, we have the interval from negative three on the left approaching positive infinity on the right. And because negative three is not in the interval, we use a rounded parenthesis here. If it was included, we use a square bracket. And for positive and negative infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis. To enter infinity into our homework system, you can either enter two lowercase o's on the keyboard or, or use the equation tool and select the infinity symbol. Next we have x is less than or equal to negative four. Notice here, negative four is in the interval because of the equal part. So to show negative four is in this interval, we make a closed point at x equals negative four here using the dot tool. And then because x is less than or equal to negative four, we would graph to the left using the line segment tool. Instead of using a closed point though, we can also place a square bracket here at x equals negative four, indicating this end point is in the interval and then graph to the left. Notice here, to the left we're approaching negative infinity. So using interval notation, on the left we're approaching negative infinity. The right end point is negative four. Because negative four is in the interval, we use a square bracket here. And again, for infinity or negative infinity, we use a rounded parenthesis. Now for our next two examples, we're given the interval notation. We want to provide the graph as well as the inequality notation. So looking at the interval notation, we have the interval from one to infinity. Because of the rounded parenthesis here, the one is not included in this interval. So we'd have an open point on one, and we would graph to the right approaching positive infinity, or the alternative notation would be to use an open parenthesis here on one and graph to the right. The inequality notation would be all the numbers that are greater than positive one, so we say x is greater than positive one. Next we have the interval from negative one to three. Because we have a square bracket on the left, negative one is in the interval, and we have a rounded parenthesis on the right, and therefore three is not in the interval. So to graph this, we would have a closed point on x equals negative one to show negative one is in the interval. We'd have an open point on positive three here, and we graph the interval between these two. Or we could also have a square bracket on negative one, a rounded parenthesis on three, and graph between. The inequality is going to be a compound inequality where x is less than three and also greater than or equal to negative one. So greater than or equal to negative one. Remember we can read this compound inequality two ways starting in the middle. Again, x is less than three in this direction and also x is greater than or equal to negative one. I wrote this up here because to enter this into our homework system, we enter negative one less than or equal to x less than three. So the less than or equal to symbol must be entered this way here. And it's always important to use the preview button here to see how the homework system interprets your entry. Now for our last two examples, we're given the graph we want to express the interval notation as well as the inequality notation. Let's start with the inequality. Notice here, one is in the interval, so we say x is greater than or equal to positive one. So this is the correct 
inequality notation, but we enter x greater than equals one. Click preview and it will show us this notation. And using interval notation, we have the interval from one on the left approaching positive infinity on the right. The interval includes one, so we use a square bracket here and a round of parenthesis for infinity. And for our last example, we have the interval from negative three to two. The interval includes negative three and does not include positive two. So we can say that x is less than two and greater than or equal to negative three. So starting with x here, we'd say greater than or equal to negative three. So x is between negative three and two, including negative three and not including two. The way we enter this in though is going to be negative three less than equals x less than two. Click preview and we'll see this notation. And finally for the interval notation, we have the interval from negative three to two. Because we include negative three, we have a square bracket. Because we don't include two, we have a rounded parenthesis here. And before we go, another way to graph this interval here would be to use a square bracket on the number line and graph to the right. And for this interval, we'd have a bracket on negative three, a parenthesis on positive two, and we graph between the values. Notice here the scaling of the number lines are different. I hope you found this helpful.